Hello everyone and welcome back to Chronos Plays Disco Elysium. Today, well I need that pry bar, not pry bar, flashlight in my hand. Uh, there we go. And now we can see a little bit better maybe. Sorry, I didn't mean to shine that in your face. Uh, let's see, we can't do anything with the ice cream maker, not yet. So this goes up to probably where that lady is, yeah? No. This leads outside. Good to know. There must have been a curtain upstairs. I didn't mean to zoom in like that. Yeah, I thought that led to like the other side of the building. Apparently, it just leads to... Oh, there's a hallway down here. Oh my god. I didn't even see that. Shoes in the puddle of melting snow. We got postcards. Okay. Something up there. And before I do that, though, I have... Oh, that's not the entrance. Oh, I didn't even know there was a door there. My god. Oh, now that my hands are covered in blood and charcoal, I want to see if this will actually make lifting this up easier. The barbell waits patiently on the no. floor. Okay. Like a well... I'm gonna finish up here before I try that. I mean, that is a 40% chance. I'm not exactly thrilled at it, but I also don't want to use it just yet. It's like, it, they, we assumed it was a trap, right? Not to mention, completely not safe. Okay. How did you not hear us? And how did we not see this room in like just lit up? Hello. I'm Nia. Uh hi Nia. A bird like we call her D then, right? Did you try knocking on my window? I must have missed you. I've been listening to my Melius. Okay, cool. So what kind of die are you looking for? Um, I'm the, the unknown kind, like the one where I go in my sleep. Could this be the malicious entity? Perhaps it's wise to go along with this masquerade for now. She's got a direct view to the backyard. You should interrogate her about the lynching. Uh, hold on, what do you mean by that? Yes, Amelia is like a call-in station. You need a two-way radio to access one. That's why I have these. Okay. Mostly, they just teach you to swear in different languages. But some of the stations <laughs> can be quite interesting. I mean, it's like the real is what she so just said. I must have missed you knocking. Uh, you have to be confused with something like that. I knocked on your window. Then how did you get inside? I have By the key. Entrance? You know what? It doesn't even matter. What matters is that you're finally here. Let's talk dice. Did you have something specific in mind? Sure, maybe. I'm a novelty dice maker. Tell me the name of your role-playing system and I'll make the die you need. That's why you're here, yes? I'm surprised that tabletop RPGs are actually even a thing in this world. As she speaks, her bone-like fingers fiddle with a ring. Her bones light, but her hands strong. Role-playing games? You know the one made by Fortress Accident. Does that count? All right, well, yeah, sure, I like role-playing games, and I need some dice. Very good. My rate is 10 real per set, unless you want something really unusual. Take a look around and see if there's any particular stone you want to use. Okay. This person means you, or no one else, absolutely no harm. She will answer freely and honestly. Cool. Um, How'd you become a dice maker? How did I become one? It was a business decision. I was a regular jeweler at first, but that's an unfocused field with too much competition. I mean, yeah, I guess so. Some of my friends were role players. They asked me to make some polyhedral dice out of cobalt. That was my first order. I huh. grew it from there. You, do you have an Etsy store or like, do you like role playing games yourself? Not especially. I like working with rare materials and a steady pay. <laughs> and role players as customers? They're nice people. Yeah, it depends. She's thankful for the security they provide her. 
Uh, hey, not to like get too sidetracked, but oh, you know, maybe I'll buy some dice from you first to soften you up. Of course. Tell me what you have in mind. Uh, do 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 do. Do you know anything about the Rel Untethered setting? Ah, yes, Fortress Accident. It's too bad they never finished their game. The Wero Untethered die is a variation of a standard role-playing die, only, instead of plants, it uses motives of ice and death. And loss, of course. Ah, depressing! I'm thinking something made from alligator jawbone. Jesus! Resin. The reptile bone is as white as ice, and dead as, well, death. For seven real, I could have it ready in eight hours. Um, seven? Or seven, sure. You said seven, not seventy. Yeah, sure, it's a deal. Oh, see you in eight hours then. Was there anything else? Yeah, about that dead man out back. Nothing really. I didn't know him. Who cares about the dead body? We might be dealing with a malignant uh, entity. Inland Empire, shut the fuck up. The lieutenant looks at his notebook, then the woman under the large window. Your window looks directly onto the courtyard. You're saying you didn't see or hear anything unusual last Sunday evening? I'm sorry, detective, but as you know, I usually have my headphones on when I'm working. It shuts out most of the daily ruckus behind my window. Uh, do you mean... what do you mean by the daily ruckus? Well, there's always something going on in the Whirling's backyard. During daytime, there are usually those kids. And lately, I've been seeing a lot of drunk workers hanging about. Must be because of the strike. She's not sorry to disappoint you. Informing on someone in a murder investigation would intrude upon her focused existence. But I never saw anyone during that fateful Sunday night, I'm afraid. Okay. And you never take your eyes off your work? I might have, but in this case, all I would have seen is my own reflection staring back from the I, mean, I guess there aren't that many lights out there, huh? It's really hard to make anything out in the yard when it's dark outside. Besides, I rarely get up to look out the window when I'm in the zone. Hmm. I used to actually do that. Not a lot, but every once in a while when I was like working at my desk, I would just stand up and go look out the window. One of the one of the offices that I worked at uh, was on the coast a little bit. So, well, it wasn't the ocean we were looking on. It was like an inlet from well i guess it was still the ocean but it was like part of the ocean but it was blocked off by other stuff but yeah i, mean, I was just looking over that a lot it was very calming we used to walk around the building there too um there was this fucking muskrat there that had no fear whatsoever of people like at all it would just be like sitting on the side of the road going rummaging through stuff and we would walk by and just look at us and get back to his work or her, or one or the other. But, yeah, it's like... Oh, it freaked out one of the, <laughs> the new girls. Uh, we were just taking a walk. She just flipped out. She's like, oh my god, there's a giant, like, fucking beaver. I'm like, one, beavers get bigger than that. And two, it's not a beaver. <laughs> yeah, muskrats don't... Well, at least this one, this muskrat was not as big as a beaver. Beavers can get pretty fucking big. And the beavers that I've seen in the wild were not as calm as this muskrat. Uh, but do you often work, uh, Sunday nights? It's an odd profession, making dice for people. But I like it, and I prefer doing this to sitting at home. Sounds like you need other hobbies, but, uh, thank you for your answers. She nods. Anything else, officer? Where are we, anyways? We're inside the chimney of an old central furnace. It's strange, I know. Uh, she looks at the ruddy bricks that makes up the wall, even though she's been... They've been repainted. There are still signs of coal black soot here and there. When I arrived here, all the other rooms were taken, so I had to build myself a makeshift home. Besides, I don't really have to pay any rent here, so that's a plan. That is actually a really good deal. Placence was right. There's an entity living in the chimney. You should ask her about the curse. Creative. It is creative. Um, I'm surprised you did this all on your own, but... Uh, have you heard this place is cursed? I've heard the stories, but I don't think those stories are true. Uh, uh Plan Sense, whatever her name is, was the one who sent Plan me. Sense, the bookshop lady? 
I've heard that her business is doing rather well. Have the energy spared her somehow? Uh, I don't know why the bookshop has gone bankrupt. As a wise woman, she has uh, some of these trinkets protecting her. Actually, the bookstore isn't doing that well. There's hardly any customers, and she has to explore her own company, her uh, her daughter for her company to go, keep her company going. All right, but it's not just the bookstore that's still up and running. What about the whirling in racks? Some people say it's part of the building complex. I think we're the only customers that have trouble paying our bill. Yeah, but it's still a separate building. Lush's energies can't reach there. And then there is me. <sighs> she just grows tentacles out of her backs and it's just like, game over. I've been here for 14 years, selling novelty dice to role-playing enthusiasts. Not exactly a million real business idea, yet somehow I've survived despite the talk of malicious energies. Strange, isn't it? Not really, no, because you're competent and dedicated to your craft, and you also have actually a customer base. And I'll be the first to tell you that there's inconsistencies with the so-called curse. I was just about to ask, what do you think? Do you think the curse is real? For some reason, your voice reminds me of that, where did you learn the fly lady? Time has come to face the source. Fear not, for the forces of the universe are supporting you in this psychic quest. Uh, I'm sorry, I think there's no curse and only business decisions. Exactly. Truth is always so disappointingly mundane and boring. Sometimes. Other times, truth can be pretty fucking weird. Well, I'm glad we got this sorted out. Anything else I can help you with today? Blaisons is not going to like what you have to tell her. Uh, oh well. Uh, do you know what happened to the other tenants? More or less. Are you interested in anyone specific? Um, hmm. Did someone here make stuffed animals? I saw a mouse lying around. You mean Mr. Fabron, the taxidermist? No, he mostly just did drugs. <laughs> Anything else? Oh my god. <laughs> I wonder why he failed. Uh, hair salon? Yes. I think it was called Androgynous Orlando or something similar. Androgynous Orlando? Around here. Turns out the oh, the poster downstairs. Don't like genderless haircuts. They're scared of that word. You wouldn't like it either. The others would laugh at you. Uh, what's wrong with a bit of experimenting? Customers, uh, customers should have been more open-minded. I'm not letting anyone I'm not trying to just touch my hair and not even have my life. I guess I'm a simple man. I don't really have opinions on hairstyle. Guess I'm a fucking simple man. I don't really have any opinions on hairstyles. Me neither. I just want it off my face. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, what happened to the gym? It wasn't merely a gym, it was Artemiteps Boxing Club. A community project created to steer at-risk use away from drugs and crime. Uh, well, definitely didn't fucking work. Uh, who's Artemit? A kind man, from Zemsk. I heard he had some trouble with the law when he was younger, and that's why he wanted to start the gym, as his way of giving back. That happens sometimes. Um... Maybe that Kuno needs a community-centric boxing club. Hmm, Kuno. Who's Kuno? The little ginger gremlin who likes to defile dead bodies. Oh, yes. You mean the kid with the sailor's mouth? Yes, I've heard him yelling profanities in the backyard. I think it would take more than a gym to help that kid. Oh, I think you're right. Uh, how did the community project work out? Probably not good. Judging from the kids I've met so far, it didn't really work out, did it? It didn't. If anything, it made the youth situation in Martinez even worse. At some point, someone started a rumor that the punching bag downstairs was full of amphetamines. Was it? Eventually, the coalition took away the funding and the club went bankrupt. This was a few years ago. It's gotten much more peaceful around the plaza ever since. You mean dead. Uh, what's up with the broken window? Oh, this one's a mess. There used to be a company that promised to repair windows 24 hours a day. What could go wrong with this one, right? This woman's like one of the most sane people we've met so far. Turns out, the business was actually set up as a front for an illicit group that was producing snuff medias. Who would have guessed? Is that like... snuff porn on the radio? Hmm. What's the snuff milia? And they never cleaned up the debris either. 
Now it's just littering the hallway and I have no idea how to get rid of it on my own. What's a snuff? It's a sub Rosa radio station that broadcasts real murders with real victims. Uh -huh. Some people pay good money to get off on it. Don't worry, the ICP has a separate division that deals exclusively with unlicensed sub roses. This isn't our problem. Okay. Good luck with that. It's not easy catching those perpetrators. <laughs> and I have my own subscription to it. I found creepy mannequins. There used to be a fashion atelier here, but I have forgotten the head designer's name. They were doing well for a couple of years until the insect rights activists came. Insect right act? Yeah. What? Mm hmm. The atelier produced a certain collection that used chitin among the materials. Apparently, chitin is made in the Occident, where it's extracted from beetle wings. Is this like more of a humanitarian thing? I'm assuming not actual, like. And you know how all kinds of political movements are big in the Occident. The activists shut down the biggest chitin supplier, which of course caused the price to skyrocket. Okay. And, naturally, all the most fashionable tastemakers refused to be seen in chitin from then on. The atelier went bankrupt before they could finish the collection. Um... I don't get why they're making clothes out of beetle wings is a terrible idea. Uh, but insects don't have any brains or feelings. I mean, I don't know the 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 exact specific behind it. I swat a bug; it looks like it's in pain sometimes. So, I mean, at the same time, am I conscious of the fact that if I kill something? The only time I actually ever like, I'm horrified of like bees. Like I have a phobia against bees or anything that looks like a bee, wasp, hornet, yada yada yada. But like. Even like I've killed a bumblebee before and I felt absolutely horrible about it. Um, and then I, I don't kill bumblebees like anymore. Uh, I felt absolutely horrendous about it because bumblebees are harmless, even though I'm terrified. It was an instinctual reaction, but or I just like hit it and killed it. I felt awful about it. Uh, now I try to get them out of the house and I usually do because I usually stand near the window. I just open the window and they fly out. If it's a fucking wasp, hornet. Something that will actually come after me, I will kill that fucker if I'm not crying or hiding in a room with the door locked. I might have done that before. Don't worry about it. Phobias aren't fun, okay? But, yeah, I don't know. Where were we going with this? <laughs> Sorry, I think I, I think my brain shot off a, the wrong synapse or something. Um, yeah, I don't know if, like... There are some very intelligent insects out there in terms of like how they manufacture stuff and what they do, yada, yada, yada. Um, I guess it's more of like humane farming compared to like inhumane farming, right? Because like I'll, I'll eat meat, but at the same time, if a fucking farm or butchery gets shut down because they're assholes where they like torture the animals, I'm happy about that. Like, they shouldn't be in business if they're just fucking torturing animals. Oh, they're gonna die anyways, Kronos. Yeah, but I'd rather them die in a, like, just a fucking instantaneous, non-painful way, yeah? Like, I don't know. It's in a humane way, right? Where it's instant, painless, didn't see it fucking coming, right? And that they lead a relatively good life up until that. Maybe I'm just too fucking sparkly-eyed optimist there when it comes to that sort of stuff, but yeah, anyways, what the fuck are we talking about? Um... I mean, I don't hate insects. If they get in my personal space, I'll fucking kill them, so I'm no better than those guys, I guess. I'm not making anything out of them. Like, me and the spiders in my bedroom, we got a deal. You stay off of me and out of my personal space, you can live here. That's fine. Like, you get the same with, like, the fucking house centipede things. Fucking don't try to crawl on me and we'll, we're good. I can't protect you against Venus. She will eat you. But aside from, like, me, we're cool. You want to stay in the corner somewhere? Hell, if I see you, like, run across the floor, that's fine. Venus is going to eat your ass. But at the same time, if you can get to the corner where she can't get you, you're good. Same, same with spiders. Kill any little flying thing that comes in here. You get to live. 
Don't crawl on me. Uh, making clothes out of beetle wings is a terrible idea. Lace it had some spark to it. Most young designers just combine lace with leather. Wow, we got off like on a huge fucking tangent there. As she shifts around, you notice several dead flies on the windowsill in front of her. Legs up. They're not moving. Yeah, flies don't last that long. Anything else? Uh, what's with the rotor blades and the skis? They were made by a company called Slipstream. After they pivoted from making rotor blades to skis, their chef executive took off on a vacation <laughs> with all their money. Uh... She rests her chin on her hand with a sheepish smile. Honestly, I think it's quite funny. I think he's still sending out holiday transmissions from Tulula or Tiumotiri or Hashtkor or wherever he is. Interesting, what did they say? The usual, I imagine. That he's been thinking up all kinds of new business plans and can't wait to get started on them just as soon as he returns. Smiles wide before she sees the lieutenant's face behind you. Like that, our curse. Sure. But Slipstream is history now. All their remaining assets got seized by the bailiffs in 47. I have no idea why those skis and blades are still lying around in the house. Not much use now, I guess. I uh, found a strange machine. Fortress Accident, the radio game studio. She liked them. They were an interesting bunch. We talked about role-playing systems every now and then. Once, I even saw two of them get into fisticuffs over Wiro. <laughs> they certainly took their work very seriously, even if they seem to be chronically liberal with their schedules. Oh, like they were very slacking sometimes? The usual. They ran out of money and couldn't get the project done on time. Well, that's what went wrong. I don't know why we're asking well, this. I did hear them talking at times. They seemed to believe they were historical individuals on some grand quest. Now, from what we saw, the project did look quite impressive. Yes, but when the money started to run out, they just began to complain a lot about capitalism. You know, how the markets are rigged to keep out new businesses and so on. Uh, you know, there are some, tr there is some truth to that in some case, but at the end of the day, too, is like, if you can't produce what you're marketing... And of course you're gonna run out of money in business, right? In the end, they just didn't get it done. Unless you'd like that fucking space game. What is that space game? Truly historic. And to show up to work on time. What is that space game? There's a space game that people have just been giving money and it's been a broken mess for years. What the hell is that game called? It's not Starfield, that's the one coming out. Star Forge? No, that's from Kotor. Um, space game millions of dollars. People stay across the board. Among Us? No, Star Spaceships. I can't even fucking think of the name now. Star Citizen! Star Citizen. Jesus Christ. I remember the last time I even tried to play that game. I never gave them any money because fuck that. It was such a broken fucking mess. Like I got out of like. I don't even think it was a character creator when I tried it. I don't even know if there still is. I, I don't know. I don't know. It's just been going on for a while. And they anytime I see it, it just looks like a just disaster. If you like it, cool. But the, from what I've seen of it, it looks just like in utter catastrophe and a waste of people's money. She's right. Showing up to work on time is important. Did she say that? Sorry, I get sidetracked. None of the work is incredibly hard, too bad. I would have supported them. The product looked great. Ah, uh, yeah, that's too bad. Not the wisest decision. You would have lost all your savings. Okay. The dice is black and filled with little silver. I meant like I would have bought it after they were done, before. but okay. Anything else? Uh, there's a, ter a terrifying taxidermy bear in the oh cellar. Oh boy, the fabled Reva show ICT. You're in for a treat here. The place was owned by two guys who had some rather innovative ideas about marketing. The bear was one of them. Now ask me about their other ideas. Okay, what was it? There was really just one. 
and it involved picking out the prettiest girls in the neighborhood and paying them 20 cents per hour. That is not a booth. lot. And by man the booth, I mean slump behind the counter with a face that could maim you if you ever dare to disturb their bored magazine browsing. Okay. Sounds like she really didn't like those girls. I know a girl just like she works at Freda and she does not particularly not particularly friendly. Employing soaky teenage girls is a widespread practice, yes. Unfortunately, they always come in packs. I'm talking about acne ridden girlfriends and gorilla like boyfriends loitering near the shop. At least that's what happened with Ravishow ICT. And they already had the bear. Uh what about the bear? The bear. Didn't work out? Of course not. The bear was terrifying. No one wants ice cream guarded by a hostile apex predator. To make matters worse, the fridge didn't work too well either, and half the ice cream came out malformed. Shit, Kim, good thing we finished the investigation. Eventually, Ravishow Ice City lost the price war to its rival, Glass A 5000. Glass A 5000 sold caramel sundaes for only 5 cents a piece, out of regular fridges. Well, well, the market's doing its job. I'm sure the bear was doing its best. Maybe. Because the taxidermist who made that bear definitely wasn't. Doing his best, I mean. Because he was doing drugs. We already went over that. He said that the bear was his vision beast. He said he met his vision beast while high on desiccants. Called it Megatherian. Megatherian? Megatherian. A mega wild beast. Mega wild beast. It's an imaginary beast that guides you through life. By telling you to do more drugs, mostly. Ah, uh, pretty sure that's just the drugs then. The horrific necktie tightens around your neck, strangely excited. But it doesn't feel particularly fun this time around. Uh, grab your necktie, mom, not now, you beast. Uh, I don't do drugs. Well, I'm trying not to do drugs. I have done drugs. Uh, not now, beast. What? Do you feel like your vision beast is trying to blackmail you the, the, the fun out of you? No, officer. I don't have a vision beast. Normal people don't have vision beasts. Only drug adult madmen like the taxidermist do. What about horrific neckties? Do normal people have horrific neckties? Neckties? I guess they do sometimes, officer. But I don't understand how it's relevant to our discussion. Oh, don't worry. Just brain trauma. Anyway, now you know I gained experience for this? Ice cream empire. Outside it's light. Light scatters from the low-hanging cloud cover. There's always the threat of snow. Anything else? Uh... A wild business, perhaps? I've been here for a long time. Apparently, you don't look that old. Then again, it's very hard to tell from these portraits sometimes what people actually look like. I found the building in Tacom, but it's not working. Oh, right. I hope you didn't try to ring me. Uh, I, I might have. I think none of those doorbells work. Including mine. I'm still in the middle of connecting the wires. Sorry about the confusion. The doorbell with the empty name card must belong to her then. Uh, I was wondering about the world is part of the same building complex. Saw the name East Delta Pinball on the doorbell. Uh, so you tell me the doorbell with the empty name saw it was yours? That's right. I haven't even written my name there. As I said, it's quite useless right now. It doesn't uh, work yet. I mean, it does. Kind of. I was wondering about the whirling and rags. Is it part of the same building you complex? Could say so. Both houses were built at the same time and under the East Delta Commerce Center project. That explains why you can call the whirling from the intercom. Albeit, I doubt that anyone responds. If the whirling is part of the same building, then it's part of the Dune commercial area. The darkness of this place is there, too. Thank you, Inland Empire, you weirdo. Uh, I saw the name East Delta Pinball. Right. It used to be a gaming arcade. Nice. It is an ancient failure before my time. I'm not surprised, however. Yeah, there's not many arcades around here anymore. My advice: don't base your business on a fad. Hypnotism, floriography, trick track, especially pinball. But I'm the pinball wizard. I mean, pinball is the worst. Kim, I'll make you a pinball. This disdain for pinball could not. Clear. Why are you bad at it? Strange thing happened when I tried calling the company called Slipstream. Someone answered. It can't be true. They don't work here anymore. They've been gone for years. Are you sure it was Slipstream SEA? 
Was it a woman? Maybe it was Play Sans from the bookstore. Uh, she said she, uh, I would have recognized her All voice. Right. But did this person say anything? She was from the electrics Tyson place. Centennial Electrics? It used to be a major electric company 100 years ago. Are you sure it wasn't just some kids playing? Nah, it was like a recording. No, it was something else. It was eerie. <laughs> You're right, I probably just get made fun of. No, something else, something eerie. It was eerie, don't get me wrong. Maybe it was just some sort of weird, rare electrical anomaly. A prank is more likely, no? Oh, the kids these days. It wasn't a prank, they it was a recording of some them, sort. And now they're terrorizing us. No solidarity. <laughs> Anyways, I have a few more questions about sure, the building. I'm listening. No, I don't. Never mind. Bye. Good. I hope it clarified things a bit. What uh, else? I'll be back when I get more shivers. Do I have anything that increases my shivers? Shiver me timbers? No. Well, that's a shame. Um, I guess we're done here for now. I could try the shivers, but. Uh, you know what? We can try that before I end the episode. How about that? Uh, we need a better crowbar. We need... That's it. We need a better crowbar. Oh, it's you again. Shivers! You feel me? Yeah, Alright. If anything, it's uncomfortably warm in here. Oh. Fuck no. I'm not taking she off my clothes. To idly clean one. Uh, shivers? Oh, it's you again. Shivers! For Aside from getting naked, you're not sure what else to do. Don't get naked! Okay, well. We will not do that then for a little while until we get clothes that can do that. Because uh, I don't want to spend too many points in that. But I guess I could do two more after that. Uh, let's go try the weight. I kind of thought putting chalk, not chalk, but like coal in my hand would allow for the a better grip here. Patiently on the floor. Oh god, like this is gonna hurt, isn't it? For its master. Kim's just gonna hate it. You managed to <laughs> hoist it off the ground, but the barbell feels wobbly and dangerous. Your hands slick with sweat. Turns out you're no beast. How? I'm you're wearing the gloves! With There'd be the blood. Form. Yeah. See? See? This place is cursed. Seems like out of shape. Maybe these, or maybe these gloves suck. The weightlifting gloves would definitely afford a better grip. Oh wait, do I have those? Wait, I think I do have gloves, don't I? Fingerless gloves. Okay, never mind. Uh, no, that's not it. Okay. Well, do I want to increase this with my level up and try again? Sure, why not? The barbell waits patiently on the floor Ooh. like a dog for its master. Conjuring up an inhuman amount of strength, you raise the barbell up in the air. Your biceps tremble, but you're a savage. This is a children's game. Oh yeah! Okay, a little, you didn't need to do that. A warm wave of accomplishment washes over your head as you drop the barbell to the floor. And ruin the floor. For a moment, it feels like you're strong enough to succeed at anything you ever set your mind to. Hey, but you're still in the ghost house. What if someone heard this? What if they know you're here? Well, I imagine Nia, Nia now knows I'm here. Good technique. Uh, thank you. Bye. Well, yeah, also, yeah, thank you for watching. I'll see y'all next time. Bye. Have a great day.